Watching today's winners and losers on Wall Street, their financial expert Rob Black, and it looks like a new big financial market, at least uh, for business, uh, gluten-free products, regulated yeah. now. Regulated and on labels. This was an area that we didn't really know much about five to ten years ago. Celiac disease is, I think I'm saying that right, mm -hmm. is something that very, very few people are ever diagnosed with. But gluten-free is now um, going to be part of labeling. Uh, it has to contain less than 20 parts of gluten per million. Um, it, it, this is big business, obviously, for grocery stores. It's big business for restaurants. The ability to say we're gluten-free, obviously something that uh, will mean a lot to some people. They feel they have a little bit more energy. Again, um, the product angle is the way, angle that I'm focusing it on. Yeah, I know more and more people, even who don't have celiac disease, gluten-free. Everyone seems to be loving the gluten-free diet. And it's funny, be, people ascribe losing weight to it. Maybe mm -hmm. it's your losing weight because you're not eating as much white bread and things along those lines um, for any products. Yeah, there you go. Something the doctors have been saying for years, right? Yep. Uh, housing, we all know how expensive it is in San Francisco, but some uh, really incredible numbers how young people just can't afford to live in San Francisco. Well, they, but they are. <laughs> That's the crazy <laughs> well, thing. The ones around here have stock options, right? In the last five years, we've seen an increase in San Francisco and in Oakland, but San Francisco of about 70% more millennials moving into San Francisco. Um, that equates now to 25% of San Francisco or between the ages of 18 and 35. Owning a home eats up about 78% of their income on a median home price, um, which is just crazy. How do you live on 22% of your income and the rest goes to housing? Mom and dad wow. um, is part of it, but also obviously stock options. And that's just the median. It takes up about 47% of their salaries to cover rents, not buying, but rents. It's too much. It ends badly because in your 20s and 30s, you should be saving money. Um, you should never spend more than 30% of your income on housing. But who am I to say, right? Yeah, and we always talk about that. Is it gross income or is it net income when you talk about what you should spend on housing? Let's just say gross for now. Okay, so, so gross part. Um, because think about it. You lose 10% to the state of uh, California. Yep. Retail taxes, income taxes, tax, California, uh, federal taxes. You have to have something left over. Okay. So let's talk about buybacks. And uh, a lot of companies now, instead of using their money to, uh, to grow and hire more people, they're just buying back their shares of their stock, and they're really keeping the stock prices up. Apple has been doing a lot of that. And I called this a loser today okay. and that's kind of odd for me to say anything negative about Apple <laughs> but they've had the two biggest buybacks ever in the history of buybacks um, and it's working for them but in the end it's a very low quality use of cash I want to see cash used for new buildings I want to see cash used for um, new product research and development maybe dividends stock buybacks are great I like them but this is a lot of cash being plowed back and again Wall Street's at an all-time high or close to an all-time high because buybacks not necessarily because of earnings growth, but buybacks are helping alter the landscape with earnings growth. Odd buyback shares with almost 0% interest. Uh, give Apple credit. Their timing has been just wonderful in being able to predict where their stock price is going. Well, thank you, Rob. And yep. if you have a question for Rob, post it on his Facebook fan page, and we'll answer it here on Cron 4. We'll be right back. Well, James, I'm seeing that the slow traffic is following your rain.